Our next presenter is Robert Marzak. Robert, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Robert Marzak. I'm a professor in the Department of English. I'm working with Gary Bernitsky, of course, Managing Director of the Center for Global Food Security, and with Aaron Thompson, an Assistant Professor in the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture. So, uh, this is Climate BufferNet. Uh, we're connecting the importance of biodiversity with food security. Uh, we're focusing on building agroecological habitats on farmlands and the rural landscape. Uh, we want to make a culture that connects people with nature and with <coughs> ecosystem services. We're focusing specifically on the creation of buffers, uh, habitats in the landscape, so riparian buffers, uh, pollinator strips, hedgerows, fence rows, etc. So this is an international effort. Uh, we're working with the UK government, specifically three organizations, the Center for Ecology and Hydrology, the CEH, which is an organization of scientists that have been working on agroecological schemes for over 30 years. Uh, we're working with the UK Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, who work very closely with farmers, and we're working with Natural England. We're also working with specific <coughs> farmers uh, and farmlands in Indiana and in the UK, and I'll just highlight one of the farms in the UK, and that's Prince Charles's farm. So you see Prince Charles above here. Uh, the gentleman below is George Wilson. He is farm manager. Uh, and this is a shot of George when I was with him this summer conducting an interview about our climate buffer net project. On a quick side note, I think a lot of people know that Prince Charles is something of an environmentalist, but I don't think everybody knows that he is an active layer of hedgerows. Uh, he builds habitats, uh, and this is a shot of him during a hedgerow laying competition, which takes place every year in the UK. So our concerns, biodiversity of course, since 1970 we've seen a 58% uh, decline in species overall across the planet. A lot of this has to do with habitat loss and habitat degradation, and of course a lot of that has to do with agricultural development. Climate change, we're seeing increasing heat stress increasing flooding and drought. This is going to affect food security, it's going to affect farmers, uh, and it's going to affect the social fabric. So the kind of buffers, the kind of habitats that we're talking about are very rich and provide a lot of ecosystem services. So greenhouse gas capture, pollination, nutrient cycling, pest control. Uh, one of the things we're focusing on is taking marginal areas of land, of agricultural land, out of production. Now, a lot of farmers think that if you take any land out of production, your yield is going to go down, you're going to lose economic benefit. But the CEH has shown over recourse uh, uh, research in the last 10 years that this actually increases yield because of the ecosystem pur uh, uh, purchases that this provides. So uh, we are at stage one in the development of our project, which is the educational stage. We have limited funding through the provost's office to develop uh, an instructional innovation grant. We're working with the Envision Center at Purdue. Uh, this is for Purdue uh, students and instructors, but you know, with more funding, we want to reach out to more researchers nationally and internationally and develop a broad community of farmers and, of course, reach out to the broader community. Um, our goal ultimately is to create a uh, culture that is centered on connecting the importance of biodiversity to humanity. So we're dynamically visualizing biodiversity in this stage one, and I'll just kind of give you an idea of what this might look like. So we want students to be able to see the landscape, uh, and we want them to be able to pick particular plant species, put them on the landscape, see what that will give them in terms of biodiversity and ecosystem services. So say a student chooses this tree, this is a Dawn Redwood tree, they can find out how much that gives them. Well, not much, because it's not digestible <coughs> by most native species. So they can try something else. This is a bur oak. Uh, this is native. That gives them, uh, that supports over 534 species of caterpillars alone. Now students might ask, why is that important? Well, it turns out that most North American birds, in fact, 96% of them, need caterpillars in order to reproduce and to survive. This is a Carolina chickadee. Um, they're native to the bottom half of Indiana. And in the course of just one day, a single pair of Carolina chickadee can bring almost 600 caterpillars back to the nest. And in the course of 16 days, when they're raising a clutch, they can bring over 9,000 caterpillars back to the nest. Now that's just one pair 
of Carolina chickadee. Now multiply that by all the other pairs of Carolina chickadee in the Midwest and add to that other North American birds and you can see the importance of planting that oak tree on the landscape. Um, of course this helps out farmers as well because oak trees are good for shelter belts, for windbreaks, for riparian buffers, and of course they provide food for many other birds and mammals including cattle. Uh, so, we're building agricultural habitats for a more resilient ecosystem. Uh, and I'll just talk about what a rich kind of hedgerow would look like. Uh, this is a shot of a farmland in England. And you'll see the hedgerows here. In the background you see trees. In the foreground you see a pollinator strip with some grasses. And what we want students to see is all the incredible diversity that this habitat supports. Uh, we want students to be able to focus in on particular species. I'll just call, talk about one right now. This, of course, is an earthworm. Now, why are hedgerows important to earthworms? Well, it turns out that earthworms will move in under hedgerows at night when it's cold, and they'll come out under a field later in the day when it's warm. <laughs> students can learn what this does. Uh, they can see this, and they can say, what is that? Well, that's an earthworm cast. Uh, and what does that tell us? That tells us that they're recycling organic material. How much organic material, a student might ask? Well, up to 20 tons per hectare each year. They can learn that they increase nutrient availability, improve soil structure, provide food for predators, remove thatch material block that blocks water, that they're excellent ecosystem engineers, and ultimately that they provide benefit to our farmers. So climate buffer net, we're visualizing scientific knowledge of biodiversity and ecosystem services. Uh, we're building habitats and corridors for a more resilient ecosystem. We're bringing farmers together on a platform where farmers can speak to one another and where farmers can also teach us because they have a lot of information that we can learn from farmers uh, about their stewardship. And ultimately, we want to create a global community of agroecological practitioners. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the audience? Kind of hard to see. Okay, well, thank you so much. All right, thank you, sir.